So, hello, Mark. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah, so Mark, uh, why don't you kick us off? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you studied, what you're doing now, stuff like that. Yeah, so I am from Patalbet. Uh, I uh, sort of started very young doing stage schools, local stage schools. Um, took a liking to drama in school, in my um, comprehensive school, Sandfields Comprehensive School here in Patalbet. Um, and then I sort of got to 15, 16 GCSEs. And I was like, oh, do I want to have a go at this as a career? And I met so many people who always said, oh, see if I had the chance, I could have done that. And I just heard so many people saying that. And I was like, well, I've got the chance, so I'm going to give it a, my best shot. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, then I can just do something else. But I thought I've, I've got the opportunity now to do this. And I was really undecided about whether to, because I was very academic as well. So I wasn't sure. I think I... I had a bit of a photographic memory, so I just used to learn textbooks by how they look, which I think maybe have been a line learning thing. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I wasn't sure whether to go down the sort of A-level or B-tech route, um, but a lot of my friends above me who, who had, had been to stage schools with, um, they went to Goss Island College, which is now Gower College, um, and I did the B-tech uh, two-year performing arts course there, and it was amazing because it completely set me up especially doing uh, a sort of um, a, a, a physical course and a, you know a vocational course rather than a, a, a studying course uh, academic it was so good because it really set me up for what a drama school training would be like because you know you, you're working as teams you're working in groups you're you're sort of getting up and doing a lot of things rather than sitting down discussing it and then by the time you get to do it and be physical with it you you've lost all context of what it was about because you've just studied it so much um, in detail, uh, sitting down and sort of not really getting it up on his feet. So I did that two year course and it completely set me up then to audition for drama colleges and, and what would be expected of me in, in that sort of training. Um, and luckily I um, got into arts educational schools, uh, London uh, in Chiswick, and I did the three year musical theatre degree course there. Um, and it was amazing because everything I'd learned from my BTEC was sort of what I was going to be doing for three years anyway. So, you know, my, my course was from 8 a.m. to sort of 7 p.m., 8 p.m. So it was a full on um, sort of hours of teaching each week. It, it wasn't sort of a lot of own study time. It was very intense. And I think the training that I had from that BTEC, you know, being on time for classes, doing your prep work and being over prepared um it really set me up for that three-year course then in in london and ever since then i've sort of been working in theater tv film um i've managed to get a really nice mix which is sort of what i really wanted to do when i was when i was younger and it's weird because even now i still feel like i was at 15 16 going oh i'm just going to give it a go and see if it works out and because, you know, as an actor, you're constantly looking for the next job, especially if your jobs are only three month contracts here, there. And so you're constantly looking for the next thing. What is the best moment in your career to date? Um, oh, there's oh, there's so many. I bet everyone <laughs> says that. It's so boring saying that. Um, but I remember. Um, I think it was it was a, when I was in Art Ed, I remember walking down the South Bank in um London and I was walking past the National Theatre and the Old Vic and the Globe and I just remember and I I wasn't a massive Shakespeare fan like I thought it was too intelligent for me and I thought that I wouldn't really understand it and then I remember walking down there with my mum and dad and I was like oh I'd love to work there I'd love to work there I'd love to work there and thinking that this would never happen uh you know you just you have these dreams and you, you sort of think oh they're never going to come true and um and I remember there was I ended up doing a show about four years ago and there, it was um a two-hander and there were two musicians in it as well and and just on the first night we we sort of opened it at Bristol Old Vic and then we toured it it was a knee-high show called The Flying Lovers of Vitebsk um, directed by Emma Rice and we um toured it to the Nuffield in Southampton and the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse, which is the indoor theatre in the Globe. And I just remember on the first night um, that we opened at the Globe, I sudden, uh, we opened and, and I went back to the dressing room. I just burst into tears. And I couldn't really describe what it was. And 
it was I just had a thought back to that conversation I had with my mum and dad walking past the theatre going I'd really love to work there and it was just it was so weird like I, I wasn't really a cry person but I just I broke down when the the guys and the musicians he said to me he's like are you okay I was like yeah I was like I just never thought I'd work here I was like that's amazing amazing and in 2018 I played Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre and then in the following year I got nominated for an Olivier Award for Best Actor in a Musical for it oh wow that was yes that was that was a massive moment because you know you see people on telly getting nominated for BAFTAs and Olivier's and things and I never thought that I would and I wasn't expecting it and I was in rehearsals for a play and my phone just started vibrating loads and like loads of messages were coming through and yeah and then uh, one of my I, I found out on Twitter that I'd been tagged in this nomination and it was amazing and wow. yeah so that was another career highlight. We've got Viv Buckley and said she was lucky enough to teach you when you were doing your BTEC and you're going to be far too modest to talk about how hard you worked <laughs> and you still work really hard and you made the bold choice to choose vocational training um, why why would you say it was a bold choice? Maybe because it's more of a risk, I'm guessing? I guess so, yeah. And, you know, um, it was sort of, vocational courses were sort of an unknown, really, because especially to, to like, my family and stuff. And, you know, my my sister took the A-level route. So I guess my parents were always a bit like, well, why, why don't you just do A-levels? And yeah, I, I think you think of them as, as a, a backup, do you know what I mean? And, and, like I guess as a parent you would sort of go well what is the best course to do f for your future and 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 to you know for you to do the best that you can and because I was quite educational um it did take me a while to get used to being a bit more hands-on and not sort of mm. asking the questions well why don't we just write it down first and then maybe try it <laughs> on his feet um yeah so I think it was quite a a bold thing and 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 in the end, I just sort of, I, I was very lucky that I'd had a few friends above me who had done the BTEC um, course at, at Gosainen. And I think I just sort of said to my parents, I was like, well, look at them, they did it and they're, they're doing really well. <laughs> and I think it was, <laughs> and you know, on looking back at it, I, I'm so glad I did that because I learned so many life lessons as well, not just like I, I was, I was quite outgoing, but I would never have been that confident in sort of, group situations and especially with people who I didn't know because up until 16 you're sort of at school with all your mates who have been there all your life and suddenly you're meeting people and because I traveled out of um Port Alba to go to Goss Island for college rather than just go into the closest college I, I sort of hadn't known a lot of those people before and and it was yeah I I, I loved it uh, that someone's asked how do you prepare yourself for an audition uh, panel interview um, I imagine like this is quite important to a lot of actors because you know that's you know that's kind of your one shot a lot of the time to get jobs. Yeah, yeah definitely. And also, like when I've had to do non-acting jobs as well, uh, sort of between roles, so much of what I learned for acting auditions has come in so handy for these other mm. interviews. Um, and I guess like preparation is like key. I know that's such a sort of basic quote to 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 say, but you know make sure you do all the research when I go for an acting role I will learn the lines I will learn about the writer I will learn about the director the people who I'm meeting you can google so many people now so I'll google what work they've done previously um, and sort of find out their style who they've worked with um, the same with whoever I know is going to be on the panels so of the casting directors have I met these people before at sort of other auditions or events, sort of theatrical events? Um, so yeah, it's just about doing so much research. And, and also if I be prepared for them to throw anything at you, because directors do like to do that. So if, you're, if you have a certain thing in mind for how you're going to play that role, the director might throw you a complete curveball and go, oh, actually, can you play it with um, an Irish accent or can you play it a bit more like this and you know even though you're going to be completely prepared on what you see that character as you know also be flexible enough to just kind of take that take that direction that they've given you and and sort of be able to do that very quickly and apply what they're trying to to tell you and also really listen because you know sometimes when you're nervous and a bit flustered and 
you just sort of smile and nod and, and, and you active listen, but without actually hearing what they're saying, really mm. um, take on board what they're saying. It's, and, and also don't, don't be afraid to like show your own personality. I know that when I've been more myself um, in auditions, that's when I've done so much better. And actually that is something that Viv Buckley taught me um, at Gosheinen because we did mock auditions for drama colleges and I sort of went in and I wasn't myself. I put on a different accent and I was like being really polite. I was like, thank you so much. And I just wasn't myself. And, and I remember Viv saying, oh, we just missed your personality and we didn't really know who you were. So I think the more yourself that you be, don't try and second guess what they're looking for and fit yourself into that mold, you know, just just completely be yourself and show off your personality and show what's unique about you. Like when I embraced, I had a, a Welsh accent. That is when I sort of found who I was a bit more and was much more relaxed because, you know, you think that, oh, I can't audition for this Shakespeare role because I got a Welsh accent, even though some of them are written with Welsh accent uh, characters. Um, you know, I was always a bit like, oh, I should put on my performing voice. But actually, you know, being more myself and with my accent and actually I've used it now for so many roles where I've just done my own accent because in theatre people accept that now. And How has Covid affected you, you career-wise? Has it been a welcome break or a bit scary as a performer and how have you made the most of your time? So it's it's really weird because you I, you know I've spent the last sort of 14 weeks sitting around thinking <laughs> oh what is going to happen but actually the first it's such a unique thing this is because you know whenever I'm not in work and even when I am in work you're constantly looking for the next job so you never get a proper break um so the first few weeks of this was such uh, apart from the sort of heartbreak of not going to America and doing this show that we'd worked really hard rehearsing and was really excited about touring America um so that was a bit rubbish at first um but then I really sort of embraced the the unique situation that the whole industry had kind of closed down for a bit you look at what we're surviving on being stuck in our houses we're watching tv we're listening to music we're watching arts programs we're drawing we're painting it's sort of like we've gone back in time and doing all those things that we did before technology even though technology's really helping us <laughs> um you know we we have gone to writing and drawing and doing jigsaw puzzles and you know that's all art and that's all creativity we're we're going to be desperate to be sat in a, an auditorium with a thousand people waiting for a show to start soon do you know what I mean? and that is going to be so magical when that does happen and and it will happen because you know after after world war ii theater just boomed and people wanted to go to the cinema and make movies and and also what has been amazing is that it's forced people to tell their own stories so you know people are making their own movies in their house and we're sort of watching things that we never would have seen before and discovering talents that have never had a voice before because they've not had the accessibility to equipment but you know you're sort of watching these things that are amazing and it will recover from this and we we will we will always tell stories in some way we can so and when we can do that to an audience we will and so even though it's slightly yeah. worrying I'm very hopeful about things that will come from it you know as part of my BTEC course at um, college we did a lot of devised um, pieces and I loved it because you can be as random as you want as silly as you want as creative as you want and I think um, I sort of hadn't worked like that professionally and I hadn't done things like that since I was at Goss Island College. Um, so it was amazing then when I first worked for Nehi and Emma Rice and Wise Children, her company, um, to go back to that sort of uh, way of storytelling in theatre. How do we make um, a bouquet of flowers? Um, oh, well, we can use paintbrushes or things like that do you know what I mean and it was it, it was yeah. amazing because it opened up my eyes to a different sort of theatre world of of and and I think it challenges an audience a lot more because they have to use their imagination rather than giving them everything and going here is the table here is the chair do you know like sort of like it, it was I I had the best time and and it, it makes it really personal as well so I was 
able to put a lot of my like I was playing um in the Flying Lovers of Vitebsk. Uh, it was a show about Marc Chagall, and I was playing Marc Chagall, and that was one of the first times I was able to use my own accent because Emma said, "Well, essentially, you'd be speaking in Russian, so there's no re if you're speaking in English in the show, so just use your own accent." Um, and I was like, "Oh, I never really thought of that, but that's brilliant." And it it, it just sort of it, I I love watching that kind of theatre where, as an audience, you're so involved because they're asking you to use your imagination, and it's so much more engaging and so creative, and it was brilliant because I hadn't worked like that since I was doing my B-Tech and it was so nice to go back to using all those skills I'd learned. Uh, bouncing a little bit back to when you were talking about your work on uh, keeping faith, um, someone's got a question here that uh, they've asked, How was it, uh, what was it like working bilingually? So it was amazing because I, so I, I'm not a fluent Welsh speaker, um, but I, studied it all the way th through school and some of my family members are well speaking so I would do as much as I could but then living in London for the last or being in London for the last 15 years you sort of don't use it <laughs> funnily enough and it was amazing because it was the hardest thing I've ever done but it was so much fun and and it was so brilliant because uh, everyone was really understanding that I was trying to learn and and it was so I learned the script um sort of uh, by ear I learned them uh, from a friend who'd recorded for them and, and sort of was correcting me on them um, but a lot of it was there which was great it was just certain sounds I was getting wrong and it was really lovely then because the, the joy of keeping faith is that there are English characters who you'd speak to in English and then you'd go back to someone talking well so it was a bit of a mind sort of <laughs> Like my mind was all over the place but it just moved so quickly because they were like okay let's do it in Welsh okay let's do it in English so it was amazing and I loved it and now it's given me even more drive to learn Welsh so I know since lockdown that has been my my big thing. Have you got any closing inspiring words for the people watching Mark? Oh no pressure. Um, <laughs> just bits of advice you know. Yeah yeah you know, it's uh, be yourself be nice um, and one of the best pieces of advice I got from one of my teachers um, was only perfect practice makes perfect. If you go into practice it, practice it to your best capability because that only then you will get better. There's, and if you put it in a sports analogy, you're not going to turn up to training and not do your best. So only perfect practice makes perfect. I've written that Great. down. <laughs> you can have that. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark.